ha ya um, okey please uh, i already shared uh, the link for i attend please click the link uh, and then uh, for the first presenter you already ready you are ready yes doctor okay so assalamualaikum uh, good afternoon uh, we start our seminar on regional anesthesia with umum kitab al fatihah Okay, so uh, thank you for sharing me the slide. So, uh, but uh, for 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 the for starters, before we proceed with uh, your presentation, the presentation, of course, uh, from the sub so from the topic and the subtopic uh, given, it is it's going to be regional anesthesia is a big topic basically. So, um, uh, what do you think uh, you should benefit from the uh, seminar? So, uh, I think I'll just pick name. Um, uh, can uh, Aisha Humaira tell me what do you expect to learn from this seminar? I'm hoping for a faster response. Um, uh, Aiman Lutpi. What do you expect to learn from this seminar? It is going to be uh, more than 50 slides. But uh, if you have a focus of what you should gain from this seminar, then uh, then then the objective of doing a seminar is fulfilled. Eh? Ayman Lutfi? No response as well. Um, I open again for who, uh, whoever of you to respond. Uh, what do you expect to learn from the seminar? Yeah, okay. Yep, Ibrahim, what do you expect to learn? Okay, thank you. So um, to to do so, to do the indication, other than uh, indi because uh, for regional anesthesia, any of the regional anesthesia, the con the indication and the contraindication is not so much differs aspect for some uh, some uh, specific details. Okay, so uh, of course you want to know what it is. Uh, you should be able to define what is regional anesthesia, and then uh, the indication and contra contraindication and how they will prepare. So the first presentation will, uh, will, will, will the first part will touch on this one so they even give a nice mnemonic so that you know what you uh, you can uh, what you can tell when you want to do regional anesthesia another part that i would like to uh, all of you have done the anesthesia posting correct correct not okay uh, not not all Okay, so um, for those have done, so uh, maybe they had the opportunity to see how regional anesthesia is being performed, and at least for the orthopedic or even other surgeries as well. So uh, I would like also for you guys to know um, how regional anesthesia, uh, it can be used as a, a, a main mode of anesthesia, it can be used as adjunct, and how to choose which type of anesthesia, uh, which type of regional anesthesia suitable for the patient. Some patient, it is being given post-operatively, some is given uh, pre-operatively. And why is uh, why it is given in such manner? So hopefully, um, and we will go through a long list of um, uh, type of blocks, uh, and we will focus on the common uh, uh, basic type. And, um, okay, I, I let the presenter to proceed. Uh, I will interrupt uh, in between so that um, uh, uh, anyone can ask question or even I want to ask question. Thank you. 
Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good morning. I be, eh, a very good afternoon. I be to Dr. Shahir and my fellow friends. So today we will be, uh, we from group C4 will be presenting uh, anesthesia sociology seminar on region anesthesia. Next. So this is the outline of our presentation on introduction by me. Uh, the next part will be presented by my colleagues. Next. Okay, so uh, for introduction, I am Ainu Hayati Mentisham, battery number 1831106. So what is regional anesthesia? So from the Royal College of Anesthetists, uh, regional anesthesia is defined when a local anesthetic drug is injected near to the nerves that supply a larger or deeper area of the body. The area of the body then uh, affected becomes numb. So the keyword here is uh, local anesthetic drug is injected near to the nerves that supply uh, an area of the body, not the whole body. Okay, next. So, classification of regional anesthesia. The first one is central neural blockade. It consists of spinal or epidural. Uh, the next one is truncal or plain. It consists of thoracic or abdominal. And also peripheral uh, neural or nerve blockade. Next. So, what are, what are the indication of regional anesthesia? So the first one is uh, for infra umbilical or extra peristonial surgeries. For example, like in uh, inguinal hernia repair, cystoscopy, colostomy for imperforate anus, rectal biopsy, and other perineal surgeries, which means that any surgery involving below the uh, umbilical region and the groin area. The next one is the uh, when there is lower extremity orthopedic and reconstructive surgeries like uh, in knee surgeries, uh, etc. Okay, next, the contraindication for regional anesthesia, the first one, uh, it can be divided into absolute or relative contraindications. Absolute contraindications include the first one is a lack of patient consent for regional anesthesia. The second one is skin infection at the insertion site of the anesthesia. And the third one is when the blockade would hinder or uh, block the proper surgery or desired post-operative neurological examination that we want for uh, the operation. For the relative contraindications, this include uh, coagulopathy, neuropathy, systemic infection or sepsis, excessive patient anxiety, mental illness, and anatomic distortion. Okay, next. So, what do we need uh, for, to prepare for uh, regional anesthesia? It can be um, simplified by using the mnemonic of SLIMRAC. So, SLIMRAC S uh, stands for sterility, L for light. I for intravenous exercise, M for monitoring, and R for resuscitation equipment, A for assistant, and G for general anesthesia if required. So uh, this is uh, how to um, simply remember the preparation for regional anesthesia, sleep break. Okay, next. What, what is another L part? So sterility or sterile equipment, okay. Uh, other than the light. Yeah, okay, fine, but uh, not necessarily we need the headlight or light the surgeon. Uh, what another L component which is important as uh, for regional anesthesia? When you define it just now? Um, local anesthesia? Yeah, of course. Local, anesthes uh, local anesthesia is important. And then uh, assistant, uh, often we use uh, sterile equipment, uh, local anesthesia, intravenous access, monitoring, resuscitation equipment and drugs, and uh, skilled assistant, and ability to convert to general anesthesia. And uh, so, yeah. Okay, next. Okay, I would like to invite the next presenter. Uh, okay, I'll be presented about central neuralgia block. Next. Okay, the central neuralgia block can be divided into uh, spinal anesthesia, epidural, and also combined spinal epidural. Uh, I'll go one by one. Uh, number one is spinal anesthesia. Spinal anesthesia, or we say as subarachnoid block, when we injected the anesthesia in the uh, sub space, which is the space between arachnoid and perimeter. And uh, it creates a conduction blockade of the spinal nerve. The result in a rapid, uh, dense, and predictable state of anesthesia. 
uh, this is the anatomy of the spine that we need to know. Uh, uh, so we can know how to conduct the spinal analysis here. The subarachnoid space lies between the pia meter and the arachnoid meter. And uh, the sub uh, is a compartment uh, with the spinal column and is contained the uh, cerebral spinal fluid. And usually the spinal cord will end at the L1 to L2 level. So when we inject, we inject uh, at the L3 to L4 interspace or L4, L4 to L5 interspace uh, to prevent uh, we, uh, we puncture the uh, spinal cord. And we have the uh, main approach that usually will, uh, uh, there is a layer, uh, certain layer when we inject the anesthesia, which is the first is skin. And, and then subcutaneous fat, supraspinal ligament, interspinal ligament, ligamental flavum, dura meter, subdural space, uh, arachnoid meter, and then uh, we reach the subarachnoid space. Next. Any other approach for the spinal anesthesia other than the midline approach? Uh, we can use the uh, the lateral approach. Let me see. Lateral approach, eh? That is position. You can do it sitting or lateral in lateral position. In, uh, correct? Yes. The approach of uh, whether midline, other than midline, what what are the other approach you can you can do spinal analysis, yeah? Uh, I forgot the name. Uh... Okay. Another one is paramedian approach. So for midline approach, uh, we will go through all this from skin uh, to the sarcoid, uh, yeah? uh, So as 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 uh, in the slide, uh, but uh, some patient because of uh, elderly changes, so the spine can the ligament can be um, hardened, classic classified, and then you are unable to pass through that layer to to go through the ligamentum flavum and reach the um, subarachnoid space. So what you can do is a paramedian approach whereby this approach uh, will uh, the injection uh, the insertion point is uh, 1 to 2 cm lateral to the midline and uh, angulated uh, to the center lah. Eh? Uh, and um, uh, the reason doing so this will bypass the supraspinous and interspinous ligament and uh, to end, to reach the ligamentum flavum and pierce the ligamentum flavum and uh, dura mater to reach the subarachnoid space. Okay. Okay. Next. Okay. We go next. Uh, there is some indication and contraindication uh, in anesthesia. And Julie Spanesia is an ideal choice for surgeries below the level of the umbilicus and there is a, a certain level uh, required in spinal anesthesia uh, for commercial surgical procedure that uh, has been listed here uh, and there is contraindication to spinal anesthesia which uh, can be divided into absolute relative and controversial for absolute when the patient uh, refuse and we don't get the informed consent for the relative uh, for example patient bacteria uh, pre-existing neurology deficit uh, stimulated valvulation spinal cleaning deformities uh, anticoagulation or coagulopathy and the pressure of bleeding, hemorrhagic distasis and elevated intracranial pressure. So we don't want to uh, further increase the intracranial pressure, for example, if the patient already have uh, high uh, intracranial pressure. For the controversial one, uh, for example, patient will have uh, they have chronic back pain, severe headache, back surgery with instrumentation, complex or prolonged surgery. Next. Um, go back to the previous slide. Mm -hmm. Uh, so correct, the indication for spinal anesthesia for any surgery is below the umbilical surgery. So um, uh, your slide uh, mentioned that uh, the spinal level required. So we, we you already mentioned we can only give at level of L3, L4 or L4, L5 or maybe lower than that at L5, S1 actually. So but um, so uh, why does uh, the spinal level required until up to T4? How do you achieve that? Uh, uh, 
the level of the ancestor that mm. reach uh, until the T4 we need that how do you achieve that? Uh, by the position positioning interesting anything else? Uh, and also the uh, veracity of the anesthesia so this level depend on the um, uh, often spinal anesthesia when you give you expect to some degree and uh, with a maximal volume of 3 mils ni, we, we expect uh, it is will be around this T10 or T8 to T10 however in patient uh, undergoing cesarean section because of the uh, because of the gravid uterus so this will uh, even though you 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 adjust the dose to be lower but it will spread more higher up to T4 level and T4 level uh, needed to be blocked because of uh, the uh, supply nerve supply to the visceral organ is uh, up from T4 okay so that's why this one uh, how do you apply this knowledge is actually after given the spinal you need to check the level of the spinal spread and uh, surgery can proceed if you reach this uh, level lah. so for caesarean we, we check until the the uh, the spread up to T4 and then uh, of course the maneuver to increase intraabdominal pressure and even positioning can be used uh, to ensure uh, and then uh, on top of that in a pregnant lady because of the increase uh, of the abdominal pressure and compression on the epidural uh, and subarachnoid space and so the spread will be higher and we need to be careful on that so just highlighting this level is important uh, depending on the surgery you know because you you need to know uh, the uh, nerve supply for that organ involved okay next okay next clear i i hope that explanation is clear okay 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 we go to the uh, physiological response that we get when we uh, include the spinal anesthesia uh, when we achieve neural blockade uh, uh, we know that local necessity is given in the space uh, that will block the nerve conduction of somatic and visceral nerve uh, somatic that will control sensory and motor where visceral uh, control autonomic nervous system and uh, in the small and related fibers that co well, control motor and pain also pressure uh, usually uh, more easily blocked than the large and amyloid fibers uh, for example in the muscle spindle and the preglobulinic sympathetic fiber and uh, the block uh, will will uh, be achieved uh, based on the sequence uh, from first to last uh, uh, which is uh, sympathetic first and then uh, temperature sensory and motor and uh, what was the spinal or the block uh, has been taken place uh, the sympathetic block uh, uh, will uh, follow the sequence for example the sensory block uh, will be two segments higher than uh, the motor block based on the sequence uh, sympathetic temperature sensory and motor next for the uh, uh, cardiovascular response uh, uh, the sympathetic fibers uh, that arise from T1 and T4 we know uh, will increase the cardiac rate uh, and when we block these fibers there will be uh, cardiac sympathetic denervation and uh, there will be no uh, parasympathetic uh, opposition and will lead to bradycardia, decrease cardiac continuity and also cardiac output and for the system effect there will be dilatation of arteries and venous capsule vessel and they will lead to uh, decrease venous return, decrease cardiac output and hypotension and uh, the subarachnoid block uh, at lower level uh, will uh, usually uh, contribute to less hemodynamic change and is better tolerated by hypovolemic patient. For example, we want to introduce a spinal sensor in the elderly patient or those with cardiac disease. Uh, for the respiratory response, uh, this uh, also will paral paralyze the intercostal and abdominal muscle and it will, it will uh, affect the patient that uh, already have a disease or a pre-existing condition. Uh, it will affect with uh, the pulmonary function and the ability to cough. Uh, uh, so, we need to correct a few things. Uh, so, um, 
uh, affecting the it will depend on the spread for the spinal to affect the paralysis of the intercostal and abdominal muscle okay yeah? so uh, it's not as a, all spinal anesthesia will cause paralysis of intercostal and abdominal muscle we will depend on the level of spread uh, and also how do you use this uh, knowledge from uh, knowing the sympathetic fibers will be rising from uh, T, T1 to T4 right? for the cardioaccessory effect um, and how do you use it in clinically so when you see um, bradycardia what, what, what do you understand after post spinal patient bradycardia what do you understand the what is your impression heart rate heart rate will be low Yeah, I am saying after spinal patient develop bradycardia heart rate less than 60 beats per minute. Uh, what happened? What does it mean? So when we said saying about regenerative anesthesia, it's different from IV drugs. So the the, the titration is uh, different and and also um, the effect. So it means. Uh, your spinal that you injected at level of L3, L4 or L4, L5 has spread um, very high up uh, more than uh, T6 and eh? level more than T6 causing um, um, re, apa nama ni, uh, blockade of the cardio uh, 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 nerves and eh? uh, leading to bradycardia. So um, uh, not not all um, Not all spinal anesthesia will result to bradycardia, decrease cardiac output uh, or directly inhibit the uh, cardiac, cardiac contractility. Lah. Uh, but all patients uh, given spinal anesthesia will have this uh, vasodilatation and venodilatation effect. So vasodilatation will lead to the decrease in the systemic vascular resistance and venodilatation will lead to uh, venous pooling and reducing uh, venous return. Yeah, leading to uh, reduce in stroke volume, cardiac output, and uh, hypotension. Okay. Okay. Mm, okay. I hope it is clear on that. Oh, okay. Next. And this is some other physiological response from the pain in the JIT. Uh, the unopposed parasympathetic will lead to nausea, vomiting, and uh, in this situation, we may need uh, atropine or glycoprolate and or, or sympathomimetic, uh, uh, for example, abhedrine and phenylephrine to oppose this uh, response and uh, decrease um, atropine also will decrease hepatic blood flow. In the renal system, uh, it will lead to decrease renal blood flow due to arterial hypotension uh, But our body will uh, autoregulate uh, to maintain renal blood flow. For neuroendocrine response, usually the surgical trauma will uh, lead to the production of intermediates and activation of somatic and uh, visceral efferent the fiber. And this deal with uh, increase uh, the release of the hormone like uh, adenocorticotropic hormone, cortisol, and uh, epinephrine, uh, vasopressin, uh, also in the RAS system. Uh, uh, But the spinal anesthesia, uh, uh, we suppress part of this neuroendocrine response uh, 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 greater than general anesthesia can do. For the thermal regulation, uh, uh, the anesthesia will inhibit the normal thermal regulation and lead to sympathectomy sympath- uh, that have perfect vasodilation and lead to loss of heat. So what do you see? The neuroendocrine response, uh, the terms you can use is actually a uh, modulation of the surgical stress response. So, uh, which is good and uh, for for the patient, if not uh, not modulating, will lead to patient into more catabolic state due to the surgical stress response, and this can affect patient recovery. So, uh, for thermal regulation, you are saying correctly uh, the sympatholysis causing or sympatectomy, as you mentioned. Lee. Uh, causing peripheral vasodilatation and um, loss of heat. So, what do you see? Uh, what, what do I see? Yeah. 
Hmm. What happened to the patient? Patient will uh, fever. So that's why nah, uh, patient will lose heat, hypothermia, uh, hypothermia and will compensate by shivering. So patient under spinal anesthesia can still maintain their temperature to some degree by shiv- uh, shivering thermogenesis. Compared to general anesthesia, they cannot shiver. Hmm. Ah, okay. 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 Uh, this is some example of the agent that we use uh, as a local anesthetic in the spinal uh, anesthesia, spinal block. Uh, for example, we can use lidocaine, tetracaine, and pivacaine. Uh, lidocaine or pivacaine. Uh, yeah, commonly used in uh, epidural anesthesia. While procaine are uh, rarely used because of set a short duration. And this is just uh, uh, drug concentration, dose of set duration and uh, duration of action. What drug often you use uh, for spinal anesthesia that you see in OT? Uh, lidocaine. Are you sure? The intratical cocktail when you 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 have done your posting, correct? Yes. Uh, um, I think um, Yeah. So what do you call uh, bupivacin? What's the name? Um, when it has dextrose, eight point two five percent, and what is the preparation that we use in our OT? Mm. So you you should this one uh, you should notice yeah even if you don't do your case report you should notice this heavy marking point five percent because uh, you are giving drug, drugs that can can be given for spinal anesthesia but you need to know what what commonly used and what's available in um, the place you observe or the center so often we use heavy marking whereby it has 8% glucose and a heavy marking of 0.5% concentration. Okay. Okay. <coughs> okay, next. Uh, so this uh, preparation for the spoon and scissor. Number one, the most important is uh, concern. Uh, we must get the informed concern and we use the physical examination as the part of the pre-op. Uh, also, lab test is part of the pre-op assessment. Also, uh, pre-medication, we can give uh, minazolam 1 to 2 mg intravenous uh, immediately or desipam 5 to 10 mg orally one hour uh, before administer spinal anesthesia to uh, reduce the patient anxiety. Also, uh, uh, opiate to relieve pain during patient positioning. Uh, in the IV preloading, we infuse 500 to 1,000 uh, ml of crystallite fluid immediately before the spinal anesthetic. Uh, so, uh, they will mitigate the effect of uh, sympathetomy. And also, we can uh, we need to meter the blood pressure uh, to detect any sign of hypertension. Also, uh, the most important is equipment, the spinal needle that uh, we have treated, uh, Queen K, uh, with a K and a Sprote. Okay, next. Which one do we use? So we use the we take a pen, the pencil point uh, 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 spinal needle lah. Eh? Uh, so the queen key is the uh, the sharp spinal can. Eh? So the we take is the pen can. So sprouter also is still a pencil point, but it has a bigger side opening. Okay. So we use uh, queen K and the uh, We use more with the pen can. Oh, 
Uh, okay, next. Also, this uh, technique for injection of spinal anesthesia. Uh, we need to know the landmark, and then we uh, palpate the crest. We draw a line at this uh, level perpendicular to spinoculum, uh, which is intersect at the L4 to L5 or the L4 body. And then we uh, what antiseptic on the skin. Uh, and skin is exercised using 1% uh, lidocaine and we introduce the needle. And for the approach, like to see before, we have the midline, paramedian, and uh, tailor. Uh, this is uh, positioning uh, and is quite uh, important in the procedure to ensure the uh, spinal exercise that we require. We can reach the spinal exercise that we, we require. Uh, Positionally, we have the sitting position uh, when uh, low lumbar or sacral level on exercise are needed. And this position uh, allows easy identification of lumbar structure. And we have the lateral decubitus position. Uh, and this position I have advantages uh, where it allows administration of more sedation. And we have the prone position. And the prone position usually we use in the lower surgery, for example, rectal, perineal, or lumbar surgery. So, uh, correction, um, we often, for the prone position, we often do it um, this uh, sitting or lateral decubitus position. Yeah? There is this what we call jackknife position or not, but uh, uh, it is not commonly used. Lah. So we often uh, either give in lateral or sitting position and if the patient need to be prone do, for the surgery, rectal perineal surgery, then we then we will prone the patient after the spinal anesthesia has uh, set in. Oh, okay. Um, next. And this is some uh, factors that influence uh, subarachnoid block. The one is type of local anesthetic. Uh, in the addition of a uh, vasoconstrictor, for example, epinephrine, that will prolong the duration of action. And then uh, specific gravity of uh, LA, local anesthesia, compared to CSF, that depend on the veracity of the solution. For example, hyperbolic solution will move to lower side, while hyperbolic move away from uh, the dependent area. Well, the isobaric stay at the same level where it is injected. Usually we need, we need uh, the, the anesthesia to go away from the surgeon. So we choose depend on the veracity of the solution. And then drug volume, uh, they will determine the height of blood, uh, speed of injection, uh, also uh, determine the height of blood. For example, rapid speed of injection will uh, give variable height of block. And then uh, babotage. Babotage is a technique when we inject the NCC and then we, uh, we, see we take back. We uh, pull, uh, pull back the... So it's a uh, aspiration yeah. of uh, the aspiration. Uh, LA cocktail. Uh, during injection of the intratical cocktail, yeah? so we don't we don't do this anymore because it causes variable height of block and higher risk for to to get high spinal or total spinal. And then type of local anesthesia. What what common we use? For spinal. Uh, um. I already told you the answer before. Uh, marking. Come again? Uh, marking. Marking. Yeah, heavy marking. Eh? So, uh, and then uh, for for that part, when you position the patient, uh, if you use heavy marking, the operation site should be the dependent area. If you can unable to position the patient to be the dependent site, to be... Uh, 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 the surgical site couldn't be on the dependent site then you cannot use heavy marking so this is what they mentioned about uh, hypobaric move away from the dependent area and so if you give it in the lateral decubitus position 
but the operation side is um, the non uh, the upper part I mean not the gravity part or not the lower part yeah of or when you lie laterally uh, so if if that because the fracture is on that side so you if you put on the dependent side then it will be painful for the patient so then you need to do the other side correct you cannot uh, yes. if you don't want to sit the patient so for that situation you need to use uh, hyperbaric or normal uh, marking uh, if uh, you able to position patient to be the operation side on the dependent area or you you do at the sitting position then you can give hyperbaric solution because we often use sitting position therefore we often use uh, heavy marking the hyperbaric solution oh. <coughs> uh, and the oh. addition of vasoconstrictor is not for spinal anesthesia it's more of on for epidural and rather than spinal anesthesia and yes we can have adjuncts uh, for spinal anesthesia but uh, it must be without preservative uh, so I will not elaborate more on that what is the normal volume that we give for a standard 160 cm patient that you often see in OT no. 3 meals and eh? Often we 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 give around three meals, uh, so uh, and we will reduce. Actually, it must depending on patient's height and patient's habitus. Uh, obese, we will cut down lower. Elderly, we will cut down lower. Uh, but uh, three meal is a standard one, unless patient and we must be cautious if patient less than one hundred forty centimeter. Because uh, we afraid we adjust the dose too much, it is inadequate to cover the surgical site. So often, patient less than 140 centimeter, uh, depending on type of surgery. Uh, but another uh, another common option is to avoid uh, spinal anesthesia because of higher risk to get high spinal or total spinal. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I think the we cannot see the slide. Okay, uh, we continue. Other factor that influence the uh, okay, other factors that influence the spinal anesthesia also, the posture of the patient that we discussed before, and also the intra abdominal uh, pressure. Uh, also, this uh, spinal curvature will affect the. Uh, the spinal anesthesia, for example, the patient that has typhus colesis, uh, it will reduce the volume of the CSF. And then the uh, intest will affect the height of block. Uh, previous spinal surgery, uh, they will affect the uh, difficulty in the technique when we administer the anesthesia. Uh, issue of the patient, uh, the younger patient have the smaller space, uh, obesity, uh, obviously, patient will increase pressure in the epidural space and will lead to the more uh, cephalic spread and also more difficult to palpate the landmark because of the thick uh, subcutaneous tissue and we need to use a longer needle. Uh, for the uh, pregnancy, uh, the pregnant woman usually has small, smaller and tighter epidural in spinal space. And next, this is some complications. Is spinal anesthesia. We can divide it into the early, intermediate, and late. Uh, for the early complication, we, uh, the patient can uh, develop hypotension, uh, nausea, or vomiting, secondary hypotension, shivering. Uh, when the patient has hypotrauma, uh, the patient went to produce heat, the patient shiver, uh, high spinal, total spinal, also intravascular and, uh, LA injection, uh, fail block, and also patchy block. For the intermediate, the patient can 
as the spinal hematoma, uh, epidural abscess, and also uh, urinary retention because there is a loss of the uh, uh, sympato sympathomimetic, uh, loss of the sympathetic function. Also, the leg, uh, the patient can have the posterior puncture headache. There is a more common in spinal anesthesia than epidural anesthesia because the spinal anesthesia we uh, penetrate more deep. So the patient usually more prone to develop posterior puncture headache, also neurological deficit, the deficit uh, due to uh, 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 backache, uh, meningitis, also vascular injury. Next. Okay, we go to the combined spinal epidural. You know that the spinal has its own advantage and disadvantage, while the epidural also has its, its own advantage and disadvantage. Uh, so when we combine these two techniques, we can get uh, uh, addition of the sum advantage and reduce the disadvantage. For example, the advantage of the spinal anesthesia, it has a quicker onset. You have denser motor and sensory block due to the penetration, and uh, we can reduce the total drug dose. Uh, while the disadvantage, uh, the anesthesia uh, usually uh, have uh, 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 usually have uh, more short duration of action and uh, in indicate uh, level of anesthesia usually we can see in the spinal anesthesia and also have adverse cardiovascular effect of a high spinal for the epidural so anesthesia. So what, what do you mean in adequate level of anesthesia? Uh, we don't reach the level of anesthesia that uh, we need in certain uh, surgery. So? For example, So, I just uh, saying that when you give spinal anesthesia, usually it's a single shot. So then, uh, if it's inadequate, you cannot top up. Okay? And then, uh, if yes. the wear is too early, often we it is standard by uh, two hours for a dense block, uh, but the effect will last uh, up to four, uh, up to four to six hours. Uh, but often we take surgery of two hours, then we it's suitable for spinal anesthesia. So. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, for the epidural anesthesia, uh, it has its own advantage. Which, uh, the, it can provide a prolonged uh, and also tractable level anesthesia. And we also can add the anesthesia because uh, we have the needle uh, there. For the disadvantage, it has slow onset of time. Uh, also, patchy block. Uh, with indicate motor paralysis, and uh, sometimes we can uh, get intravascular injection and lead to the subsequent CNS and cardiovascular toxicity. Uh, next. Uh, as I said before, when we combine these two techniques, we can offer uh, advantage of both and minimize the disadvantage. And uh, this project is performed at the lumbar level and uh, is, uh, is a comprise of a needle through a needle technique. Like we uh, see in the picture, we have the spinal needle and epidural needle, uh, needle in the needle technique. Next. Okay, for the epidural anesthesia, we touched briefly on the anatomy of the epidural space. Uh, epidural space is a space uh, uh, outside the dura uh, outside the dura meter. Uh, is a space inside the vitreous filament that outside, and outside the dura set. It is a more uh, of a potential enclosed. space, lah. Eh? It's actually not uh, uh, not open all the time. Eh? It is a potential space where we can expand. Uh, okay. Okay. And cranially is enclosed by the foramen amendum and closed uh, by the sacrococcygeal ligament caudally. Uh, and this dura often doesn't touch uh, or attach to the prostate of the spinal canal uh, unless some inflammation has occurred. Uh, and uh, this uh, epidural space is a potential space. 
and we have the separate compartment that uh, interspersed interspers with areas of the epidural space. And this uh, area also uh, can be opened up or created by injection of a bolus of a uh, or liquid. Next. So at which level you can give epidural, you can insert epidural. So final you say L3, L4, L4, L5, and L5, S1. So how about epidural anesthesia? At which level uh, you can, can it fully insert at the lumbar level? Can it be inserted in the thoracic level, cervical level? Can we do that? Um, yes. Okay, good, correct. So, you, because as you explained, you extend over there. So, we can block at any level of the spine with just epidural per se. Okay, proceed. Okay, next, uh, this is a long physical effect of the epidural block. So it's actually the same as as you know, the same oh, as uh, same. spinal to some degree, eh? uh, but if you prolong the effect, then it will have more effect, uh, more benefit, for, especially for abdominal surgery, uh, because uh, of uh, the uh, you reduce or modulate the uh, surgical stress response. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Okay. Because okay. you're explaining the spinal, so then I think it's the same. Okay. Okay, this is a choice of a local anesthetic. And we know that the onset of epidural blockade uh, in the dermatome and immediately surrounding the site of injection usually be detected uh, within 5 to 10 minutes. And the time for the we get the peak effect uh, will uh, be different depending on the type of the local anesthesia, dose and volume in mistake. And uh, this is a table that uh, summarize some of the uh, local exercise used in epidural is concentration on set time and duration. Uh, next. Uh, okay. Uh, when we introduce epidural exercise, when we colonize the LA, uh, it can uh, hasten the onset of the anesthesia. Uh, this is, uh, uh, for example, when we add uh, sodium bicarbonate um, uh, immediately before addition of the any lead, uh, agent, say lidocaine, pubicaine, or chloro, uh, chloroporcaine, it can produce a clinically significant faster onset of anesthesia that uh, will contribute to this in uh, nerve block. Uh, however, However, some drugs are actually provoking and motivating uh, uh, will precipitate the addition of bicarbonate uh, unless we use a very low concentration. Uh, uh, we also can uh, add epinephrine to certain local and uh, that will increase the duration of addition. Uh, usually by uh, decreasing uh, vascular absorption, also by uh, promoting uh, vasoconstriction, so the incision will be more localized, so we can increase the uh, duration of friction. Uh, this uh, the effect of the addition of the is greatest with the when we use to chloroprocaine, lidocaine, and mepivacaine, and uh, is less effective with the longer acting agent. Next. Okay, uh, we go to the uh, jump to the local anesthetic. Uh, many drugs we can uh, to improve uh, the quality of the nourishment blockade. For example, uh, clonine, which is the alpha 2 adrenergy agonist, will prolong the duration of action of the local anesthesia, uh, but the mechanism uh, is not clear. Uh, uh, it can reduce the original spinal cord blood flow and slowing the rate of drug elimination. And this is the potential benefit of the administration of clonidine into the epidural space. We we'll prolong and enhance the effect of the epidural LS uh, without uh, adding the risk of hypertension. And we we'll reduce the LA dose uh, 
uh, requirement for labor epidural injection because it can uh, and we know that it can enhance and prolong the effect. Uh, it also the effective uh, analgesia uh, without motor impairment. You have the synergistic effect with uh, opioid and uh, opioid agonist antagonist. Uh, it can modulate uh, the stress response to thoracic surgery, uh, preserve lung function after thoracotomy, and uh, reduce the cytokine response. Uh, for, and then uh, it can uh, further reduce the pain sensitivity. But it has uh, some side effect. For example, you have the dose uh, in the pain hypertension, uh, by the cardiac sedation, and dry mouth. Next. This is a uh, technique we use in the epidural analysis, which is uh, four piece. The one is preparation. Uh, as usual, we need to get the informed concern, set uh, some IV line, uh, resuscitation equipment must be ready, and all, all this preparation must be done in the septic technique. And then we position the patient uh, in the sitting position or lateral decubitus position that uh, we commonly use. And then uh, we project, uh, we go to the projection. We use the approach uh, median, pyramidian, or tailor. Uh, for the puncture, uh, we can uh, use advanced to handle it. We style it through, uh, style it, uh, through the spinal ligament and into the interspinal ligament. And then we remove the stylet. Uh, and then we attach the LOR syringe with air or saline. Uh, and then we use the hanging drop technique because. Uh, in the epidural epidural incision, we have the cerebrospinal uh, fluid coming out when you use the hanging drop technique. Uh, when the fluid is warm, we can say it is a, it is a CSF, but if the fluid is a, uh, cool, it is a normal saline that we use. Uh, and then we insert the epidural cavity into the epidural space. And this is some technique we can use to identify the epidural space. Uh, when there is loss of resistance, uh, loss of resistance to saline uh, with or with the air bubble, uh, the hanging drop technique, which is the the CSF coming out of the needle, and also the atros atrosonography. Next, uh, this is a complication and common side effect of the epidural anesthesia. The more is local anesthesia, systemic toxicity. Uh, it comes with the symptoms like uh, periodic leg and numbness, hypertension, lightheadedness, dizziness, uh, peripheral vasodilation, and some other uh, symptoms. Uh, allergic to uh, Just want to ask, what is the common um, side effect of epidural anesthesia? If this is common, the, the one you are listing is common, no one wants to do it. Correct? So this is a potential, but not common. What are the most common uh, uh, side effects of epidural anesthesia? Uh, hypotension? Yeah, correct. So, hypotension, pruritis, urinary tension. This is the, the common one. Uh, what, uh, what you are listing is the one, uh, the, the, the one that is uh, not so common but can occur. And, uh, and we need to know that, like, especially for last, because there is a specific treatment for it. Okay. Okay. So these are some uh, potential complication that we can get, but not common. Uh, for example, uh, under the allergic to local anesthetic, we have the hypotension pruritus, which is uh, some common complication in the epidural anesthesia. But uh, arachnoiditis, arachnoiditis is. Uh, is a back pain that uh, radiates to low extremities that uh, worsen with activity. And the patient can also have buttock pain, muscle spasm, motor weakness, decrease of motion, also urinary sphincter dysfunction. And uh, the patient can have a backache. And usually this uh, uh, back pain is supplementing and should resolve within 7 to 10 days. And we can give uh, an acetaminophen uh, or heat to provide a symptomatic relief to the patient. Next. And then uh, postural uh, punctual headache. Uh, it can occur in the epidural anesthesia, but is a uh, not uh, is a co more common in the spinal anesthesia. 
uh, also subdural injection when we inject in the subdural uh, space. Uh, it can lead to higher sensory blockade, uh, poor corresponding, sacral sparring, higher motor blockade, and Honda syndrome. Uh, I guess uh, it can lead to total spinal anesthesia, caudal equinus syndrome, and epidural hematoma. Uh, next. Okay, for the labor epidural uh, indication, number one is uh, pain relief. Uh, number two, uh, preparation for surgical anesthesia. For example, in these, uh, certain cases, so in between gestation, preeclampsia, trial of labor after surgery and delivery, and category two, fetal heart rate tracing, uh, attempted visual delivery, and then history of the prior postpartum hemorrhage and BMI more than 40 with obstructive sleep amnia and anticipated of a uh, uh, non difficult airway, and also history of malignant hypothermia in the family. Yes. Uh, this is some pros and cons of the labor epidural. Uh, the pros, it can provide pain relief. Uh, for example, epidural is a very good choice uh, for the pain relief and the labor. It is safe and also effective. And uh, epidural also uh, allow patient to be awake and late. So uh, the patient can uh, uh, can be conscious when the uh, when the baby is out or being present for your birth. Uh, and epidural also provide uh, a more uh, opportunity to rest, refocus, and restore energy before the patient can push. And the most importantly, no negative effect on the baby, uh, unlike the other narcotics that we can cause uh, neurotransmitter depression. So, so respiratory, respiratory distress uh, for the disadvantage. Uh, uh, it will limit the movement of the patient uh, and most women are not able to walk around after receiving an epidural and also a slightly longer labor uh, about, and is about two hours different in the length of the second stage of labor compared uh, when uh, we don't use the epidural. And also postpartum nightmares. Uh, epidural can take... Uh, can lead to the postpartum dampness and uh, uh, we need about a few hours to fully recover from it. Also, we are in the uh, catheter. The patient may need to have a urinary catheter put, put uh, into place uh, if the labor lasts uh, more than four hours because uh, the patient's ability to, to pass urine is uh, decreased. Uh, next. Uh, so this is a pedrolis and long-term side effect. But uh, when we follow all the uh, st uh, standard procedure, this uh, side effect is very early, unlikely to occur. Uh, some uh, the recent side effect to the patient, the patient can have maintain hypertension, uh, which is a drop in blood pressure, shivering, nausea, as soon as bruising around the agency side. Uh, postural puncture headache and also permanent nerve damage, which is a very rare complication uh, in the labor epidural. Uh, okay, uh, I will pass the present to Afik Nekwidin for the trunk block. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, so as for my part, I will presenting on the uh, trunkal block okay, next. Right. So, uh, what is the trunkal block? So, trunkal block is uh, it refers to those of the nerve blocks uh, that involve the chest, abdomen, and periaxial. So, this trunkal block typically uh, involves the level of T one, T two to L one spinal nerve. Next. Okay, so as I said earlier, that it involves the chest, abdomen, and so on. So it will. Uh, there is a lot uh, of there is a lot of types of the uh, nerve block. So the first one, uh, we go one by one. So the first one, let's go to the pectoralis nerve block, or we commonly see as the pex uh, pex nerve block. So it is further divided into pex one and pex two nerve block. So for the pex one, it block the medial and lateral pectoral nerve uh, which innervates the pectoralis muscle and the pets to block is the 
block that uh, the goal is to block the upper intercostal and intercostal brachial nerve which innervate the axillary and the chest so this uh, for the pax one block uh, the position is the mid clavicular line and the infra clavicular area so the transducer uh, position is we put it in the transverse position so uh, the plane of injection is that uh, we aim to put the needle between the pectoralis major and the pectoralis uh, minor muscle. So it is uh, commonly done in the breast surgery. So the pet to block is the the position is uh, is the anterior axillary line and the overted uh, rib. So the unlike the pet one block, the transducer position is on the sagittal uh, position. So uh, it, the place of the injection is that we aim the needle to be the uh, between the pectoralis minor muscle and the serratus anterior muscle. So it is also indicated in the press surgery, but uh, it is uh, since it involves the axillary, so it is indicated in the press surgery with the axillary clearance. Okay, so uh, this is just the visual diagram of what I, I've been talking about. Okay, next. Oh, okay, so this is uh, for the PEX2 block and the previous one is the PEX1 block. Okay, next. Oh, okay, so the second one uh, in the trunker block is uh, we have the serratus anterior nerve block. So this uh, facial plane is located at the long thoracic, thoracodosa and the lateral cutaneous branches of the intercostal T2 to T9 nerve. So uh, in this uh, plane, there is also thoracodosa artery. So serratus, uh, the, as its name suggests, the serratus anterior muscle is innervated by the long thoracic nerve. So uh, unlike the pets block uh, earlier, the serratus anterior block is uh, the area is more lateral and the more posterior than the pets block. So uh, the position of the block is that at the level of the nipple and the mid axillary line. So the transducer position is that we point toward the nipple and the plane of the injection is between the serratus anterior and the uh, latissimus dorsi muscle. So it is indicated in the uh, latissimus dorsi flat ring construction if there is any rib fracture and the thoracotomy anesthesia. Next. So uh, as we can see here, that is uh, on the left uh, diagram, that is, uh, be, we put the needle between the latissimus dorsi and the serratus anterior muscle. Okay, next. Okay, so for the third one is the erector spinal block. So this kind of block is, uh, our goal is to inject the local anesthetic in a plane that is deep to the erector spinal muscle, but uh, it is super, uh, superficial to the transverse process. So this erector spinal block is the cranial cordial spread and uh, there is two ways uh, to do this uh, erector spinal plane block. So it can be done either by single injection technique or via the catheter placement. So this catheter placement is uh, usually done uh, if we want to give the continuous uh, infusion. So uh, single injection usually typically uh, only lasts about three to four hours. And this erector spinal block is the volume dependent block means uh, if you give more, uh, you get more the effect, right? So the position of the block is uh, approximately 2 cm away from the midline and and try to visualize the transverse process. So the transducer position is, uh, it can be either in paramedian, sagittal or, uh, or sagittal orientation. So the plane of the injection is we aim to put between the erector spinal muscle and the thoracic transverse process uh, like I said before. So this uh, erector spinal plane block is uh, usually we do for the rib fracture and the um, back and the chest wall surgery and it can also be done to manage acute or chronic pain. So it can also be done as the uh, pain, pain uh, management. Just to add, for erector spinal block, so depending, um, it can both for thoracic punya wound 
and also for a Roman wood, even for Severian wood. So it's a record spinal block, tail block can be done at any level as well. Then for breast, then you need to do at around T4 level. So it really spread uh, two, two segments and uh, above and below. So, uh, and uh, if the wound is big, then uh, for, let's say, for abdominal surgery, you might need to do multiple injection. And, um, so, even for cesarean, you can do a rectal spinal block to cover uh, the L1 and yeah, the lumbar area. Lah. Thank you, uh, Nets. Okay, so uh, this is the visual diagram. Okay, Nets. Okay, so next we have the paravertebral blocks. So this uh, paravertebral blocks, uh, it, uh, it perform at the both thoracic and the lumbar level. So it is a kind of the matumal distribution of the anesthesia. So we also like the uh, like uh, electric spinal block, we can do it at the multiple level. So usually three to four level is enough to generate the uh, adequate amount of uh, anesthesia that we want. So multi-level injection has a better efficacy than the large volume injection. And the, it is done at the paravertebral area which contain both spinal and sympathetic nerve uh, and also the vessels. So However, the paravertebral block is uh, the patient might have the risk to develop pneumothorax, uh, hypotension, and uh, intratical or epidural injection. So the position is uh, we put at the lateral to the spinous process, and the plane of injection is we aim to superior to the costal transverse ligament and the pleura. So it is uh, indicated, and we usually see uh, this paravertebral block paravertebral block in the breast surgery, thoracic wall and the chest wall surgery. Next. Okay, so uh, the patient uh, we put at the at the back, we inject at the back so we can uh, mark the, the anatomical line mark first before we inject. Next. Okay, so um, then we have the intercostal block. So this, it is commonly used uh, for supplemental anesthesia, anesthesia not as the primary. So it is uh, the intercostal block is, it is uh, to, it is origin. Uh, we aim the nerve that is originated from the ventral ramite of the T1 to T12 uh, spinal nerve because uh, this spinal nerve run in the groove of the inferior side of the rib. So uh, with both artery and the vein. So because of uh, it move uh, with the, it runs with the, together with the artery and the vein. So it, we need to be caution on the uh, to get the last uh, local anesthetic uh, systemic uh, toxicity because it has the highest absorption. So and we can see the risk it can develop pneumothorax or intravascular injection. So. The position is uh, anywhere uh, in the proximal to the mid axillary line. So the plane of injection is uh, we aim the in we aim to have the local anesthetic uh, proximally to the fracture site because it is indicated in the rib fracture and the post uh, surgical pain in the thoracotomy, mastectomy, and gastrotomy. Next. Okay. So this is. Uh, the visual diagram of the intercostal block. Okay, next. Okay, then uh, we have also the quite common uh, block that we see in the OT, uh, which is the transversus abdominis plane block or type block. So this, uh, so this uh, uh, type block, we have the several approach to do this uh, block, which is the first one is the lateral approach. So we, it is in the mid axillary line between the subposter margin and the iliac crest. So the transducer position we put in the transverse position. So the plane of injection is that uh, we aim to uh, between the internal oblique and the transverse abdominis muscle. So indication uh, because of it involves the uh, lo it is usually involved the lower part of the body, so it is indicated in the lower abdomen or even pelvic surgery. 
and uh, example is the uh, in the lower section cesarean section so the the other approach is the oblique sub subcostal approach this is the from the subcostal or mid clavicular line so the transducer position is it, we put in the oblique position and in this uh, approach we aim between the rectus abdominis and the transversus abdominis muscle so the kind of block is the above in the upper part of the body so it is indicated in the upper of abdominal surgery with subcostal incision okay so uh, this uh, tab block uh, blocks the somatic thoracolumbar nerve from the level of t1 to the l1 at uh, which innervate the abdomen and if we put it inferior enough the tap block can also uh, block the ilio inguinal and the ilio hypogastric nerve so uh, like i said before it is located between the transversus abdominis and internal oblique muscle so see, we do it a uh, single posterior tap block that will anesthetize the t10 to uh, l1 is c laterally and however it is quite difficult to perform because the in the abdominal wall surgery it can distort the anatomy so uh, the we it is quite difficult to perform this and there is a risk of the peritoneal puncture and the bowel or, or even organ perforation so the landmark of this uh, type block is the we we address it as the triangle of petit which is the iliac crest inferiorly external oblique muscle anteriorly and the latissimus dorsi muscle uh, posteriorly Okay, so uh, this is the visual diagram. Okay, next. Okay, then we have the quadratus lumborum block. So the indication is the same as the tap block because uh, uh, it is derived from the posterior tap block, uh, and it is it can provide both uh, somatic and the visceral anesthesia. So the target area is between the as the as the name suggests, between the quadratus lumborum and the psoas muscle. So the local uh, anesthetic agent should spread between the thoracic uh, paravertebral space in order to achieve the energy energia from T4 to L1. So the best position is that we do this quadratus lumborum in the lateral decubitus uh, position because of uh, we can uh, it is better ergonomics and we can have uh, better visualization. So, uh, yes. so it is uh, most commonly indicated in the lower abdominal surgery. Next. Okay. So, okay, next. Then we also have the rectus uh, shift block. So this uh, rectus shift block is the 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 block is the between the rectus muscle and the posterior rectus shift. So it it is not uh, deep enough, and is since it's, it it is not deep enough, it provides the superficial anesthesia to the middle part of the abdomen, typically from the xiphoid process from the pubic symphysis. So uh, the it is the location of the intercostal nerve from seven to eleven, and the subcostal nerve from uh, and th at the level of T twelve, and uh, if there is if the surgery involves the last incision, we can give uh, the multiple injection on this uh, side. So the position can be the subcostal or paramedian position, and the transducer position we can put it in the transverse position. So like I said before, the plane of injection is between the rectus abdominis muscle and the posterior rectus. C. So indication is the. Uh, typically we do in the abdominal surgery with uh, midline incision because it's located at the middle. Okay, next. Okay, so this is the diagram of what I've been seeing before. Okay, next. Okay, so if we uh, move um, on the uh, below, there is the, we also have the inguinal block 
which involve the iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal nerve, which arrive from the uh, at the level of L1 with minor T2 involvement. But this inguinal block can have uh, can give the complications like uh, discomfort or uh, intravascular or intraperitoneal injection with and also persistent paraesthesia. Uh, so the plane of the injection is between the internal oblique and the transverse abdominis muscle and it is uh, commonly done in the inguinal hernia repair. Next. So this is the picture. Okay, next. Okay, then also we skip this one. Okay, we skip this one. Right, next. Okay, next. Okay, so, so before we go to the peripheral nerve block, I want to ask um uh, among the blocks that you this, I, I'm sure you guys uh, um not really familiar how it is like eh? uh, uh, at least uh, the, the the important thing is uh, exposure for you to know uh, the names of block so now uh, in conclusion um, to select what type of trunker block that uh, you want to do will depend on the uh, location or site of the wound okay uh, site and size of the wound and then uh, second you need to understand whether the um, whether the block perform uh, is it um, uh, able to block the somatic pain, uh, which is the skin, eh? or visceral pain, or mix? Okay, so um, uh, as you say, so for breast surgery, you can do PEX2, PEX1, PEX2. So PEX2 if uh, there is axillary involvement, good. Uh, is PEX block uh, somatic uh, uh, and provide somatic analgesia? or visceral analgesia? Okay. Um, I think uh, the PEX block uh, can give uh, both an uh, analgesia. Uh, wrong. The answer is somatic analgesia only. So, um, visceral analgesia is the type of block that been performed when it is uh, the, the block that is more proximal or close to the spinal column. Yeah? So, the closer to it to spinal root means it is um, uh, it, it will mimic more close to the uh, epidural or spinal that we are uh, that that been explained extensively. Okay, so for for block that is uh, more distal and more superficial often they don't have a uh, visceral effect. So that's why we, uh, PEX block is not done as a sole, an, uh, sole anesthesia. It always in combination with general anesthesia. So this is why you need to differentiate. Okay, so uh, next block, uh, okay, now uh, we already answered, correct? You know how when one PEX1 and PEX2, uh, uh, so next block is? Serratus uh, anterior uh, plane block. So, is this a somatic? So, it covers T2 to T9. So, uh, injection at mid axillary line. So, uh, is it a somatic block or uh, a somatic analgesia or visceral analgesia? Does it provide somatic analgesia or visceral analgesia? I think this uh, this serratus anterior block also like uh, patch block only give the somatic. Good. Okay, good. So you can see uh, that and uh, it is also can be used for upper abdomen surgery such as uh, if uh, apa, lapar, uh, cholecystic, open cholecystectomy wound, we also can consider to do serratus uh, anterior plane block. Even actually for uh, breast surgery, depending on the um, incision site, uh, serratus plane block is also feasible. Eh? So, depending on the injection site lah. Uh, okay, and then uh, next. Uh, so, erratus spinal block, we, it is uh, both somatic and visceral. Uh, but, uh, because uh, the surgery, we, uh, the surgery that it covers doesn't allow it to be done as a sole and as a well. So, you can see the trend is most of the trunker block are not used as a sole analgesia. It is always an adjunct. Okay. But you need to know what it covers. Lah. It covers somatic only or visceral only. 
uh, and for erector spinae uh, it can uh, depending on site of injection can do thoracic can do lumbar uh, okay so next so para vertebral is same as um, uh, as ni so somatic and visceral Oh, um, only that uh, it is a deeper, uh, uh, deeper. Uh, the side toe is deeper than the uh, rectus spinae block lah. So that's why more difficult, uh, less vi better visualization. Yeah. Uh, so it's not commonly uh, done, hmm. and higher risk for pneumothorax uh, or even even epidural injection. Uh, so next, this is also same as uh, the rectus spinae, I mean depending on the level of uh, it is being performed. So can do for thoracic, can do for abdomen, depending on the level level of any. Then uh, intercostal, so of course it is somatic, yeah, uh, and mainly for rib fracture or thoracotomy. Uh, why we don't often use it for mastectomy? Because then you need to inject multiple, multiple, uh, multiple sites. So, uh, Compared to the other plane block, it is a continuous plane, so single injection, it can spread uh, quite a, a bigger area compared to intercostal block. Next. So, uh, transverse abdominis, actually it can spread from uh, T6 up to L1. So, depending, uh, but uh, more common, we we use it for the uh, lower abdomen. Uh, around that T8 to L1 and because uh, it, it, it can have uh, L1 sparing or T6 uh, sparing near the ZF sternum. So often we use a uh, lateral or posterior approach and uh, the oblique or subcostal, yes, uh, can be used for upper abdomen surgery. So this is a uh, tap block is a visceral, a block visceral, sorry, it, block somatic, it provides somatic energies yeah. Next. So we can use it for post spinal after cesarean. We can give tap block for patient. We can use it for hernia. Yeah? Uh, so ni then quadratus lumborum block is a more advanced block compared to tap because it involves a deeper structure. There are few approach, uh, and it can covers from uh, T4 to uh, L1. Uh, yeah, and must be performed in lateral position. Um, because uh, it is uh, more posterior and you cannot uh, usually we you need to use a curvilinear probe because of the deeper structure so this one both somatic and visceral next so right the is somatic analgesia so it usually uh, for multiple injection uh, four points eh? so often from uh, umbilicus it is a uh, uh, one cm above uh, the umbilicus, then at, from that point, we will give uh, injection, uh, four quadrant injection lah, basically. Uh, so just remember, it is for a midline incision, but often when patient has abdominal drain, so uh, for the upper part, we will give the rectus and for the lower part, we can give a head block to cover the pain at the drain side. Next. And then, yeah, okay, for this is more of somatic pain, uh, inguinal block. Another thing that we didn't touch in the presentation uh, is actually um, uh, there, there, there are blocks, uh, certain blocks like inguinal block and uh, even tap block. There are surface marking technique and there are ultrasound, guide, ultrasound guidance technique. Of course, now more, more familiar with ultrasound technique. Uh, ada, uh, but uh, the surface marking technique also still use it, uh, still being used, especially uh, for video in going to block. Okay. Yeah. Proceed with the limb block. So I hope we can finish in twenty minutes. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So I'm going to talk about peripheral nerve block. So what is peripheral nerve block? It is a um, anesthetic practice using many surgical procedure. And also uh, we focus on the limbs uh, divided into two, which is upper limb and lower limb. 
next uh, talking about indication and contract indication of peripheral nerve block so indication of uh, peripheral nerve block a uh, patient who at risk of respiratory depression related to ga and then patient with suspected difficult airway uh, or patient at uh, high risk of postoperative nausea and vomiting or in patient who is intolerant uh, not responsible to oral medication or patient who desire to remain uh, conscious <clears throat> because they're afraid of uh, GA or some, something like that. And then the contraindication for peripheral nerve block is, of course, uh, when patient refuse. And next one is allergy to local anesthetic, for example, uh, lidocaine. And then um, active infection at the site. Also, uh, it is contraindicated in patient who taking uh, anti-thrombotic drug. Um, or with coagulopathy, so because we don't, uh, we want a um, uh, risk of bleeding, and then the last one is pre-existing neural uh, deficit. So uh, I'm talk I'm going to show the anatomy of the brachial plexus. So this is important in order to give the peripheral block. So. Um, we have learned before there are root, trunk, division, and cord. Uh, the number is uh, five root, three trunk, t trunk, and then um, six division, three cords, and uh, five terminals. So the first uh, is brachial plexus uh, blockage. This is an antiscaline approach. So uh, the indication of this approach is for shoulder and upper arm surgery. Um, and then um, the transducer position is uh, transverse on the neck. Uh, it should be three to four centimeters superior to clavicle over the external jugular vein. So um, in this case, uh, our goal is to spread the anesthetic drugs around the superior and medial trunk of the brachial plexus. Next is the equipment. So um, I, I bet uh, most, uh, almost uh, all of you have gone to uh, OT. So these are the equipment that should have in the uh, uh, to to do the blockage: ultrasound machine, uh, the tray, syringe, uh, also the um, stimulator, and then the sterile glove. So the technique of Interscaling approach is first we have to um, place over the external jugular vein. Uh, difficult to see, I think, but it's okay. Um, and then uh, we have to, like I said, three centimeter above the clavicle. And then uh, we can start at supra, uh, supra clavicle fossa and scan proximally to the plexus. So. Um, the landmark uh, on ultrasound you can see uh, anterior scaling muscle and medial scaling muscle. So in uh, between uh, of the, these two muscle, there there are uh, roots and trunks. So um, this is where a local anesthetic drug spread, which is within the interscaling space inside the sheath. Next one, uh, the second one for upper uh, upper uh, upper limb blockage is supraclavicular approach. The intention for this approach is uh, for arm, elbow, for arm, and hand surgery, and also uh, possible for shoulder surgery. Uh, the transducer position for this approach is transverse on the neck, superior to the clavicular uh, clavicle at the midpoint. So this uh, approach uh, is to spread the anesthetic around the brachial plexus, posterior and superficial to the subclavian artery. So the technique for this uh, approach is uh, first we have to um, prepare the, all, all the equipment and then start uh, initial transducer placement which is in the supraclavicular fossa uh, in the uh, midline 
and then lateral to the clavicular head of um, sternocleidomastoid and then you have to deal a little bit uh, quarterly. So uh, you can see this uh, anatomical uh, position. So it, it is useful in help uh, for the landmark to insert the, uh, the injection. So ideally, uh, it should be spread within the uh, facial sheath lateral to the lateral to the subclavian artery but uh, superficial to the first rib and then for lower uh, limb block uh, also it is important to understand the um, anatomy of femoral nerve and then uh, this nerve supply uh, a lot of muscles uh, such as notorious pectineus, quadriceps knee joints and uh, uh, also the skin of the anterior and medial thigh uh, and the medial aspect of the leg. The first technique, uh, the first uh, block for lower limb is femoral nerve. So in this uh, technique, uh, it is indicated for uh, surgery on femur, thigh and knee or patella fracture. And then um, uh, we place the transducer uh, at the femoral crease parallel to the inferior to inguinal ligament and uh, so for this uh, technique we have to detect the femoral artery because um, medial to that uh, there is a femoral, femoral nerve so local anesthetic drug will spread under the lateral, lateral. I'm sorry, lateral uh, to the femoral artery. So um, the local anesthetic drug will spread uh, under the fascia ili iliaca around the femoral nerve. The last one is sciatic nerve block. So uh, for sciatic nerve, uh, the innervation uh, can be uh, directly innervate posterior compartment of the thigh and then the hamstring portion of the ductal magnus. And it also can indirectly innervate uh, several muscles. Um, you can see in the picture um, uh, via two terminal branches which are tibial nerve and common fibular nerve. Um, Apart from that, it also can uh, innovate um, sensory innovation uh, via its terminal branches. For example, uh, terminal nerve it supplies skin of the posterior lateral leg, lateral foot, and sole of the foot. And then uh, for com common fibular nerve, it supplies skin of the lateral leg and also of the foot. So this is uh, this is a technique for subgluteal level for sciatic, uh, sciatic nerve block. So make sure we have to uh, know where, where to place the transducer, which is uh, at gluteal crease, until it can see the best view of the oval shape sciatic nerve. So we can compare the, uh, the view we can see in the ultrasound and the, the graphical of anatomy in the, in the, on, on, your, on the right. So, median session is in plane and lateral to medial. So, at, uh, until we reach the um, the common uh, connective tissue sheath. So, that, that's uh, where the local anesthetic drug spread. And then the last one is uh, top lithium level, sciatic nerve uh, block. This is uh, for it can give anesthetic and analgesic for surgery below the knee. So the transducer, uh, transducer placement is at uh, should be transverse four to five centimeter above the popliteal crease, and then uh, at this point uh, you can see in the um, ultrasound the landmark. Uh, you can see a popliteal artery and femur. 
So the ideal view is uh, sciatic nerve and the uh, um, common perineal nerve slightly diverge within common connective tissue. So when you insert the needle, it should be in plane and lateral to medial. And then uh, uh, the needle tip position should inside the common connective tissue sheet between the um, between the TN and the uh, CPN, which is common uh, peroneal nerve. So this is where the ideal uh, the spread of the local anesthetic between uh, these two nerves. That's all for lower and upper uh, nerve block. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, for limb block, uh, the principle is uh, if the the more proximal uh, the more proximal you block this, uh, this either at plexus, uh, either at plexus or uh, the branches. Yeah. So if more proximal in the plexus, ni usually it requires one injection. Uh, I forgot to highlight that for the trunkal block just now also we didn't discuss the volume required. Yeah? So often it requires uh, at least 20 mils uh, of uh, local anesthetic. Lah. Yeah? So uh, back to the limb block. So in the brachial plexus then um, uh, as, 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 as the presenter explained, so we can uh, either block at the root or division cords or um, even at the uh, early part of the terminal branches and so uh, we so here we can go interscaling a bit lower supracalvicular and we can go infracalvicular infracalvicular also we all we have a medial approach or another name is costoclavicular and the a bit lateral approach the classic infracalvicular block then we can go at the axilla for axillary nerve block and uh, and then of course we can go more distally, upper elbow uh, individual nerve block, uh, the median ulna and radius uh, and radial, and also below elbow uh, or forearm block uh, uh, of the uh, median uh, radial and ulna. And we can even perform wrist block. So depending on the side of the operation and uh, the need uh, of using uh, tonicate or not, then uh, we will uh, we will uh, we will block accordingly. Uh. Uh, and then uh, for uh, limb surgery, uh, for upper limb, eh, um, we can do it as the main mode of anesthesia, except for interscaling and um, except for interscaling lah, eh, and shoulder for shoulder surgery. Often we will uh, we will still do it uh, with general anesthesia because it will be close to the patient and often it will take longer. And it also depend on the duration and complexity of the surgery. Lah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, another another indication to use peripheral nerve block is actually a part of rehabilitation. Some patient after surgery they develop uh, contractures and uh, and uh, uh, stiff stiffness. Yeah? Uh, uh, so um, for physiotherapy wise, we can do uh, peripheral nerve block catheters. So that uh, when we block the nerve uh, at the uh, analgesia uh, concentration it will um, uh, make the muscle less tense uh, and uh, the, the, the limb uh, less uh, rigid, uh, more relaxed. Therefore, physiotherapy, to, uh, they will do manual man manipulation and anesthesia and um, uh, to improve the range of movement and uh, enhance um, the, uh, so that more intensive uh, or aggressive physiotherapy can be done without causing much pain and even can top up the uh, analgesia if needed during for physiotherapy purposes okay so uh, volume approach then you can see know the names um, i think the most important you know the names you know the brachial plexus and understand if we uh, for certain surgery especially if below then uh, 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 arm right eh? uh, then we have quite a number of options uh, other than orthopedic surgery, not to forget about the uh, vascular surgery. 
So um, like the uh, creation of AV fistula or even uh, the superficialization repair or even ligation of uh, uh, um, AV fistula uh, of upper limb can be done under uh, regional block as a main uh, mode of anesthesia. So compared to the abdominal just now, it is mainly adjunct. Uh, uh, none uh, perform as uh, uh, not often perform as uh, sole uh, an anesthesia and uh, for limb the, it can be used except for this interscaling lah yeah? because of the surgical site close to the uh, close to the patient head and face so it, it, this will be very uncomfortable and depend on the dura- duration so for uh, lower limb so the most important to know is the femoral site and then not to forget the ankle block we we haven't we did not discuss that one and so uh, for the femoral we can do any and actually there is another part uh, whereby you can block both uh, all three femoral nerve block uh, lateral femoral cutaneous nerve block and the obturator nerve which supply uh, uh, the entirety of the medial uh, anterior and lateral part of the thigh eh? Uh, so if indicated to do so then uh, we uh, especially for plating femur and whatnot so we can do this and even for hip surgery uh, femoral nerve block can be given and another thing is the um, supraangular fascia iliaca block which block all three nerves that i mentioned just now can be given for positioning and to some extent uh, i have used it as a main surgical anesthesia combined with uh, monitored anesthesia care lah. Then um, often the volume for lower limb blocks is 20 mils. And then if we need to block both, um, we will block the sciatic. Uh, then we block the femoral because sciatic nerve is bigger. So it will take a bit uh, more time compared to femoral nerve block. And, uh, and then uh, especially it can be used as the uh, main uh, anesthesia. And especially limb surgery, uh, we in high risk patient sometimes we opt to use this peripheral nerve block because uh, except for uh, almost all actually all the limb block does not uh, have a sympatholysis effect such as the uh, apa, um, central neural axial uh, and the uh, uh, ESP paravertebral and quadratus lumborum okay so for limb it is a somatic lah uh, and uh, of course, we see whether it uh, just, uh, the there is terminology we call uh, sclerotome, means supplying of the uh, uh, muscle and uh, the bone, uh, myotome, uh, supply to the muscle and the matome. So whenever we do block, just like how abdomen you uh, you you describe according to the spinal root to the matome level. Um, actually, the femoral, the lower limb also you need to know uh, which dermatome, sclerotome and myotome. It, it's nice to know at least. So, know the names of this block. It has different approach. If you uh, go into anesthesia, have a look at the block form and you can see they will list all the numbers, uh, all the names of the approach. So, it means we can go at any level depending on the, uh, uh, the uh, site of the surgery. Um, yeah, we did not cover about local anesthetic toxicity, systemic toxicity, um, which we which we should have. Um, so we'll just do it as homework. It's already four twenty. I think very late. Uh, thank you for all the nice slides. Uh, I think the most important for you, at least, you familiarize with the names and eh? uh, and site and how to choose and the normal volume and also how to prepare the slim rack. Basically, everything is the same. Slim bread, 4P, it's about the same. And you can just uh, uh, refine the slim rack so uh, it can include as well 4P. So. And all the indication and, and contraindication is uh, almost the same. Uh, uh, just at the site uh, or location of the surgery. Yeah. Um, yeah. And for the epidural, actually, there is a, it, it can be another topic on its own. Um, and we have epidural pop-ups uh, whereby uh, cesarean section patient already on epidural for epidural labor but need to do c- uh, emergency cesarean section we can perform the block uh, we, we can top up the epidural if it is not dislodged 
for cesarean section so uh, even actually um, epidural we can uh, compa- comparing spinal and epidural spinal more reliable spread compared to epidural sometimes if multiple um, uh, surgeries can multiple spinal anesthesia or even cse there will be uh, fibrosis in the causing septa uh, septae limiting the spread or of the epidural drug in the epidural so this can be um, causing variable degree uh, of block uh, or patchy block uh, compared to uh, intratical um, and we did not discuss about fail uh, spinal um, uh, but yeah uh, the, uh, because I, I think it's too much so I hope as long as you know name name of blocks how to choose uh, the um, uh, somatic and the visceral uh, analgesia provided and which um, uh, blocks can be used as uh, as the main mode of anesthesia and which uh, will be used as adjunct okay so because we can do ga epidural we can do ga uh, with peripheral nerve block ga with uh, of course ga with tonka blocks and then Uh, so you understand this is part of the multimodal uh, analgesia approach. Any question? Any question? Silent means no question, I suppose. Yes, I don't think we have any questions at all. Okay. So, um, if you have any question, can ask. Um, uh, I hope uh, the 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 C4 group uh, who had already done a good job pre- preparing the slide can add the points that uh, I have highlighted regarding uh, the um, uh, somatic visceral and uh, using of in combination and also the volume of LA for the truncal block. Uh, and then, so before sharing with the your friends for for them to uh, see back through eh? uh, and then uh, yeah so you can add that one um, with that we end our if no question thank you again uh, with that i end the seminar with so to ask and that's thank you Rita. okay Um, selamat berbuka. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr.